Hey everyone, happy 4th of July. It is currently Independence Day in the US right now. So I thought I would show you how to make a quintessential American dish, mac and cheese. Let's get started. So to start, I wanna cook our pasta shells and the breadcrumb topping for the mac and cheese. So I'm going to heavily salt my pasta water and go in with the shells. And then in the pan, just on a medium heat, I'm going to add in a couple of tablespoons of butter and just let that melt down before adding in the breadcrumbs. A little trick that you can do as well is just add a little bit of olive oil into the butter because it helps with the burning point of the butter because olive oil has a higher point of burning so that way it won't brown too quickly. All right, so now I'm just going in with all of our breadcrumbs. I have just put fresh bread into a food processor to make my own. If you don't have any bread at home, you can just use panko breadcrumbs if that's what you have instead. So we're just gonna let these cook until they are nice and golden brown and toasty. So our pasta is cooked, so I've just strained off the water and I've popped it back into the same bowl and I'll just set that aside until we need it a little bit later. To finish off our breadcrumb topping, I'm just going to add in some parmesan cheese, a little bit of lemon zest, fresh chives, a little bit of thyme, and pepper. I'm not going to add any salt at this point just because the parmesan is really salty. So I don't think we really need to add anything extra into the topping. And I'm just gonna stir this until it's all just nice and combined. Perfect, and then I'm just gonna set that aside until the very end. The sauce for mac and cheese is going to start with a bechamel base. So in a pan I'm just going to add in some butter and let that melt down before I add in some aromatics which are going to be my onion and garlic. going to cook this down until the onions become nice and translucent before I add in my flour and milk. So now I'm just going in with some plain flour and I'm going to stir this pretty vigorously for about a minute to cook out that fl um, flour taste and make sure that it doesn't burn. All right now little by little I'm going to slowly add in some of our milk until it all has emulsified and becomes really creamy. Make sure that when you are doing this as well that you're not using cold milk otherwise it will seize the butter and it will start to clump up. So rumour has it Thomas Jefferson who signed the Declaration of Independence is also the person that apparently invented mac and cheese. I mean I'm sure that's a touchy subject for some people and up for a bit of debate but I just figured it was a perfect fit to make mac and cheese for the 4th of July. All right, now that the heat has come back up on the milk, I'm gonna start adding the rest of our ingredients. So I have here some um, cheddar cheese, some mozzarella and gruyere. Get the rest of that out of the bowl. And I'm also gonna use a little bit of Parmesan as well. Black pepper. 
pinch of salt and some whole grain mustard. And now I'm just gonna keep stirring this until everything has melted and the sauce is nice and thick. So our cheese sauce is ready, our pasta is cooked, so I'm just gonna fold it in and then pour it into our baking dish and then pop that into a 180 degree oven for about 10 minutes and then we will come back. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. I've just pulled the mac and cheese out of the oven. I'm gonna to top it with our breadcrumbs and then pop it back in for about another five to eight minutes until they're all golden. And then we are good to go. There you have it. That is my take on a classic mac and cheese. I guess it's time to see how it holds up. I mean, you guys can't smell it, but this smells absolutely incredible. All right, let's hope I don't um, burn my mouth. This is freaking delicious, and I 100% recommend you guys trying this at home. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you want the full recipe, it's gonna be in the link in the description above. And I will see you all next week for another video. I feel like at some point as well I want to make a joke about, you know, typically they have barbecues, but bunning snags are, you know, the epitome of a cooked sausage and I didn't think <laughs> I could top that, so. <laughs>